Uh, my name is Jörg Ristevski. I'm a PhD student at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia. I am supervised by Dr. Stephen Salisbury and Dr. Gilbert Price at the University of Queensland, which are my co-authors on this paper. Yeah, so the study that uh, got published at PRJ uh, is part of my PhD project and uh, it deals with uh, describing and naming a new uh, genus and species of uh, extinct crocodilian from Australia. Um, initially, the study began as uh, uh, an anatomical investigation into a well-preserved but incomplete uh, crocodilian skull that hasn't been described before. Um, it was just briefly mentioned back in the 90s. There it was referred to Polynarchus polonis. Um, now, for those that may not be familiar with what Polynarchus polonis is, uh, that is a uh, binomial name uh, with uh, some historic significance to uh, Australian paleontology because it is the first uh, name given to an extinct crocodilian from Australia. Uh, Polymarchus polonis, uh, the name was coined back in 1886 and it was assigned to um, several fossil fragments found in southeastern Queensland. Uh, throughout the 20th century, Polymarchus polonis uh, became quite uh, widespread in its usage and many fragmentary uh, crocodilian fossils were assigned to it. Um, and that caused a bit of confusion as to what exactly is uh, Polynarchus polonis and what should and should not be referred to Polynarchus polonis. So essentially my job was uh, to figure out whether the skull that I uh, was studying should be referred to Polynarchus polonis or not. And the way to tackle this issue was at first to try and compare this skull to the type specimen of Polynarchus polonis. Now a type specimen is something extremely important to a taxon be it a genus or a species because the type specimen is basically the uh, template as to what a certain species looks like and we can compare other specimens to the type to determine whether they belong to the same species or not and there was an issue with uh, with this because the type specimen of polymerchus polonis has gone missing uh, it got lost sometime in the late 1990s early 2000s and there was just this tiny fragment that was uh, recovered of it eventually, but unfortunately this fragment was just not very informative. And the next thing that uh, was done was to have a look at the literature and see what descriptions and old black and white photographs were published of this type of specimen uh, before and try to see if there's anything distinguishing about this uh, type of specimen of Polymarchus, any unique features in it that uh, can help it help stand out from everything else that we know. Uh, among crocodilians uh, so far. And unfortunately, there just wasn't anything unique about this uh, type specimen. So this unfortunate combination of the type specimen being both lost and there's nothing unique about it uh, meant that uh, Polymerchus polonis could no longer be considered a valid name. He named this new animal Polyderex vincenti. Uh, Polyderex, the generic name, means Swamp King in Latin, and the uh, specific name Vincenti uh, is in honor to the late Mr. Jeff Vincent. Now, Jeff Vincent uh, was an amateur fossil collector from southeastern Queensland that uh, discovered this skull back in the 1980s. So, it's uh, the name of the species honors uh, Mr. Vincent's uh, discovery. Um, Polyrex uh, Vincenti, the skull of Polyrex, was uh, studied in detail, its external anatomy was, was described, but uh, also I went a step further by having the skull pieces CD scanned. Um, and here's just one piece that I have uh, with me of the skull. This is basically the basic cranium uh, of the back of the skull. And uh, uh, thanks to the CT scan that was acquired from uh, the, the fossil skull, I was able to digitally reconstruct um, some endocranial structures, uh, such as part of the brain endocast, some uh, cranial nerve canals, some vascular canals. Uh, and this is significant because not only is this good to, uh, to know, uh, because it just expands so much uh, what we can learn about the anatomy of this animal, that it's just impossible to obtain this information uh, without CT scanning. But also um, uh, describing endocranial features through CT scanning is a first for an extinct crocodilian from Australia. Uh, Polyrex vincenti, so what was Polyrex? Um, Polyrex vincenti lived uh, during the Pliocene epoch, so uh, approximately 5.3 to 2.58 million years ago. Uh, we estimate that its uh, size uh, was uh, uh, about five meters in length. It could grow up to five meters in length of adulthood. 
It had a quite a bulky head with a proportionally broad snout. Um, now, I say five meters in length, that's uh, not without precedence among living crocodiles. For example, the living in the Pacific crocodile that today inhabits Australia, as well as Southern Asia and Southeastern Asia, uh, can grow to five meters in length, and some individuals can grow to six meters in length. But one of the key uh, differences in the physical appearance between Polyrex and in the Pacific crocodiles is the shape of the snout. So in the Pacific crocodiles have proportionally narrower snouts uh, than Polyrex vincenti. So if you were to uh, try and imagine Polyrex uh, in life, it would have looked kind of like um, uh, an in the Pacific crocodile on steroids, if you will. Uh, it definitely was one of the top predators uh, in Australia <clears throat> during the Pliocene epoch. Uh, because of its size, it was uh, capable of um, uh, taking down uh, large uh, prehistoric kangaroos and giant diprotodontid marsupials. Uh, the lakes, rivers, and swamps of southeastern Queensland during the Pliocene were definitely very dangerous because of polyurex.